Hey YouTube, in this video we have a fourth order homogeneous differential equation. So to solve this, we'll start by writing down what's called the characteristic or auxiliary equation. So we have 16, and then this is a fourth derivative, so we have m to the fourth. So the power of m always matches the order of the derivative, then plus 24. This is order 2 because it's the second derivative, so it's m squared and then plus 9, and then you don't have to write anything here. If you want, you can think of this as being the 0th derivative, and so it's just m to the 0, which is 1, so you don't write it. And this is equal to 0. So this is called the characteristic or auxiliary equation. I believe this should factor. Let's try it. It looks like it will. So maybe this will be 4m squared, and this is 4m squared. Right, because 4 times 4 is 16, and m squared times m squared is m to the 4th. Two numbers that multiply to 9. So let's try 3 and see if it works. And it does, right? 3 times 3 is 9. The inside is 12. The outside is 12. When you add them, you get 24, which is the middle term. Boom. So you have a product equal to 0. So now you set each factor equal to 0. So 4m squared plus 3 equals 0. And it's kind of silly, but I'll write it twice. <laughs> you really only have to write it once. So we'll go ahead and solve one of these. So subtract the 3. So we end up with 4m squared equals negative 3. Divide by 4, so we get m squared equals negative 3 over 4. And then take the square root of both sides. So square root, square root. When you take the square root of a variable squared, you always get a plus or minus. And it looks like we're going to get an i, right? Because we have the negative inside the square root. So it's i square root of 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. So we have complex roots here. Recall, when you have complex roots, the answer takes the form c1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x plus c2 e to the alpha x sine beta x, where your roots are alpha plus or minus beta i. In this case, it's 0 plus or minus i square root of 3 over 2. So our alpha is 0. That means that all of these e's are going to go away, because e to the 0 is 1. But here's the tricky part. We wrote this twice, right? So this is a repeated complex root. So in this case, we're going to have to write this down once and then write it down again and multiply by x due to the repetition. So the final answer in this case is going to be y equals c1 and then cosine. And our beta here, our beta in this problem is the square root of 3 over 2. Right? It's just this piece here without the i. So it'll be square root of 3 over 2 x plus c2 sine square root of 3 over 2 x plus, and now we have to write it again but multiply by x because this showed up twice, right? So we have a repeated root. So it'll be c3x cosine square root of 3 over 2 x plus c4x sine Make that C a little bigger. Sine square root of 3 over 2 x. That's a square root of 3 there. So square root of 3 over 2 x. And that is the final answer. So kind of a harder problem. And I think what makes it a little bit tricky is this repeated complex root. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So I wanted to show you how to deal with it. I hope that made sense.